On Sunday, I said how the first announcement by Jesus of his passion, death, and resurrection is immediately followed by the transfiguration and that those two texts go together. Well, today we have another prediction of his passion, death, and resurrection. He does three of them in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, three announcements. I believe this is the second one. I could be wrong on that. It could be the third one. But either way now, we have another announcement followed by another incident uh, or something, uh, which I'll get into in just a second, that, again, are gone, meant to be side by side. In fact, the church gives us both of these texts together in today's gospel reading. And so now, followed by Jesus' announcement of his passion, we now have the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who wishes to make a request. In fact, she almost treats Jesus as her magic genie. In fact, Jesus kind of even plays along when he says, well, what do you wish? <laughs> you know, what, what, what can I grant you? You know, playing along with these things. And then she asks that her two sons be elevated, be lifted up, you know, to a, to a spot of prestige, a spot of honor, a spot where her sons will be someone. And I use that phrase very carefully, to be lifted up, to be elevated, because did you notice the overall scene of this gospel passage? It's what? It's the journey towards Jerusalem. They're coming from the northern part of Galilee down to Jerusalem, but they don't use the word down. Instead, they use the word up, you know. So you go to Florida, we say we go, to, we go down to Florida. So it's kind of weird ge- geographically why they would use the word up until you know what? That Jerusalem is one of the highest elevated areas in the nation of Israel, if not the highest. It's one of the reasons why it was chosen to be its capital, its central city. Back in ancient times, you always built up for what? To make it harder for invaders to attack and overcome the city. Also, there's the idea that what? That God is elevated high on the mountain. And so the temple in Jerusalem, in the highest area, the temple is at the highest spot in the city. Again, God's dwelling up on the mountains. And so they're, mat- they're naturally, Jesus and disciples are making their way to Jerusalem, but by way of elevation, they're going up. It's as if Jesus is marching towards his ascended throne, which is really actually what he's doing. And that's the point he's trying to make this morning. He's going up to take his throne, but the throne is the way of the cross. The throne is Golgotha. And now he's inviting James and John, are you going to drink the chalice? Are you going to go the same way that I'm going? You know, this is like one of the reasons why we do the stations of the cross. So just a reminder, at the Mass this morning, it's the Mary's way of the cross. But we do the way of the cross, why? To enter into the path of Jesus Christ, to bring our own sufferings and to know That, yeah, God is going to provide the deepest desires. Yes, God is going to answer the prayer of the mother of the sons of Zebedee. He's going to answer her prayers. But he's going to do so not in a very cheap and shallow way, but in a way that is much more permanent. A way that that reaches into the deepest longings of our hearts, of what we really and truly want and desire. And that is to be in communion with God. And so the path of God is... The path of glory is through the way of the cross. And our Lord is asking us to enter into that path. God is always, when he answers our prayers, not always in the way that we want, but in the way that will have a long and lasting, and more importantly, an impact in our lives. Something that will stick with us for the rest of our lives and into eternal glory. It's not some very shallow and easy way out. It's always something that is long lasting, you know. So by way of analogy, quickly, you know, your children, your grandchildren, when they're younger, they ask for candy for dinner. And yeah, you want to grant their desire for happiness, but you do so in a way that's what? That's more permanent. You give them good food. Why? For good health. You are satisfying their needs. 
but you're doing so in a way that is more impactful and long-lasting for their lives. And so too with us and with God. But we enter into his way of the cross, which an experience of his great and divine love will have that long and lasting impact on our lives. May God bless you.